At that time, they came. He came to. We are learning in the bus. After that, my brother, he, they, they come he, near the, the house. They arrest him, kill him. The Elari atrocities remain a serious threat to peace, security and stability in the region with grave humanitarian consequence. It has continued to carry out atrocities against innocent civilians, in particular children and women including abduction, murder, mutilation, burning and looting of villages, and destruction of livelihoods. This has resulted in massive displacement and acute humanitarian crisis. The countries of the region made sustained efforts to address the LRA problem. These efforts include the Juba peace process, which led to the final peace agreement, which the LRA leader repeatedly refused to sign. They displaced a lot of people in Eastern Equatoria. Similarly, they did in uh, Central Equatoria here. At one day, they killed about 60 people in one village in, uh, in the Bari land. And uh, when they relocated to Congo and parts of South Sudan, immediately we saw displacement of uh, the Zandi people, uh, particularly those at the borders, we, we immediately saw their impact the, of displacement. All these atrocities, we were uh, facing this by ourselves, our army, and uh, also our aero, what we call the aero boys well in fact the community police they did help a lot together with our army spla and containing them in western equatoria as well as you know, uh, western baragazal the african union felt that this was a major issue and should chip in to enhance the effectiveness of the efforts of the countries of the region to neutralize the LRA and bring its atrocities to an end. We have suffered for 21 years, we want to have rest. We want to, to enjoy the peace. We want to also to go to, to, to school. We want to at least to, to develop ourselves. array has been identified as a major threat to peace and security in the continent and that is why the African Union did encourage the regional countries in uh, organizing this enhanced regional cooperation against the LRA. I believe we have been taking the right action. This has been duly supported by the heads of states and the government and as we speak the African Union initiative against the LRA is enjoying a very broad support on the part of the international community, including from the UN Security Council. It is an African Union initiative whereby it is supposed to coordinate the action that will take soldiers from these affected countries to track in a coordinated manner the LRA and eliminate the threat of LRA create conditions conducive to peace and stability in the affected areas, and also creating conditions that could allow uh, development to take place. The 
regional task force is an initiative of the African Union. So in terms of who is facilitating the RTF, I should say it involves so many players. But the key, the first player in the facilitation of the RTF force is the African Union through the JCM. This is not a, um, an African Union mandated force. This is an African Union authorized force, but the affected member states are the ones who are supposed to raise the force and put it at the service of tracking the LRA. The African Union takes the commitment to mobilize support, mobilize force, but these countries must raise the force and finance and fund it and keep it. In fact, we warmly welcome this initiative of the AU to come and support our, our local effort in combating the LRA. And we think their presence has given the will and uh, the hope to our people that they are not alone in fighting the LRA and that uh, uh, there are the international community as well, uh, the regional organization like AU is there to support this uh, initiative. In terms of their presence and their collaborations with the UPDF and with the SPLA, and particularly because you know the border, we don't have we don't have soldiers in the border. But when they came, I think they have really smashed the area around the border of the Central Africa and the, and the, and the Congo DRC because the initial those areas were open. And this is where the fear is. It's given a little bit of confidence on the people around the, the area, and particularly in those areas, in order for them to go even for cultivation. created all the conditions required for the force to be deployed. And all those steps have been taken. Political decisions have been taken, and then uh, uh, conditions uh, uh, for the operation of the force has been created. We have the headquarters of the force. We have the commanders already in place. They are working on their concept of operations. We have uh, the office of the special envoy in place in, in, in Bangui. We have uh, the nucleus of forces already in a number of places. We have visited, we have gotten the commitment of all the top leadership of these countries to this uh, initiative. And, uh, and today, as I told you, major decisions have been taken for forces to be deployed. And these are the main progress. And if you consider that uh, the Security Council decision to authorize the force has been taken last November, uh, you can see that we have made some headway. Uh, we believe that the African Union is equipped with the right principles, the right doctrine, the right peace and security agenda. And we believe also that the African countries have the political will to unite and to mutualize their resources and assets so that they can fight all these phenomena with, with efficiency and with credibility. Of course, by doing so, the African Union also acts on behalf of the international community as a whole, because peace in Africa is an integral part of the global peace. And therefore, we do hope that as we move forward, as we strengthen our own action, the international community will come in strongly in support of the African Union action.